Hello everyone, this is Dr. Ian. For today, we're going to be talking about the Hinge Theorem in Geometry. One of the popular um, theorems that we use in uh, proving and measuring inequalities in triangles is the Hinge Theorem, and that's what we're going to be working on in our problems in our lesson in geometry. So first, let's define what the Hinge Theorem is, and it's also known as the SAS, or Side Angle Side Inequality Theorem, which where it states that if two sides of one triangle are congruent to two sides of another triangle, and the included angles are not congruent, then the longer third side is opposite the larger included angle. I know there's too much words in this particular theorem, but it simply states that whichever holds the bigger angle between the two triangles, it will also hold the longer side. So in this case, since we know that angle A is greater than angle E in this statement, we know that side BC is longer than side FG using the hinge theorem. And if we have the hinge theorem, we also have the converse of the hinge theorem. And we know in geometry, converse is simply in a conditional statement P then Q, its converse is Q then P. So you will notice that in our statement, BC or side BC is larger or longer than FG. And if we're going to uh, choose between angle A and angle E, which one is bigger, given that AB is congruent to EF and AC is congruent to EG, we know that angle A is bigger than angle E, as stated by the converse of the hinge theorem, or the side, side, side inequality theorem. So if two sides of one triangle are congruent to two sides of another triangle and the third sides are not congruent, then the larger included angle is opposite the longer third side. And we're going to be using the hinge theorem in identifying between or among the four choices that we have, which statement must be true knowing that triangle SAK is the right triangle and YOU is an acute angle with 70 degrees given at angle YOU. So first thing that we do whenever we're encountering a problem like this, it's always easier to visualize and to answer problem to by drawing our triangle and putting our markings in our triangles based on the given information that we have. So here we have triangle S, A, K, and this is O, Y, U. We know that S, A is congruent to Y, O. So S, A is congruent to Y, O. And we also know that A, K, A, K is congruent to O, U, O, U. So A, K is congruent to O, U. And we also know that angle A is equal to 90 degrees and angle O is not equal to 90 degrees because this is 70 degrees. Angle O is 70 degrees. So we know that we can use the hinge theorem to be able to figure out the correct statement for this particular pairings of triangles because in this case, if we're going to compare line segment SK in comparison to line segment YU, we can conclude that since A is big, bigger than O, SK is also bigger than YU, so our inequality will be the greater than symbol. So now we're able to solve or find the statement that is true between the two pairs or between the pairs of triangles that we are seeing in this problem. So using the Hinge theorem, we are now confident that SK, line segment SK and line segment YU 
SK is bigger than YU, therefore A is the right choice for this particular diagram. So that's how we use the hinge theorem. And if we are familiar or just visualizing that it talks about which side or third side is bigger or which angle is bigger compared to the two triangles, we'll be able to use the hinge theorem easily. So if we're going to choose the possible measure of angle A, which is this angle right here, knowing that AB is congruent to DE and AC is congruent to DF, and we are also given the measurement of side EF and side BC, which is five units and six units for these sides right here. And the angle D is 45 degrees. And using the hinge theorem, we know that the bigger angle holds, or opposite side of that bigger angle, holds the larger or longer length of the two triangles, provided that the two corresponding parts of the triangles are congruent which is in this case is true. So we know that angle A, without using a protractor, with these three choices that we have, we know we can eliminate 45 degrees because they're not supposed to be the same or congruent. We can also eliminate an angle larger than 45 because BC is smaller than EF, and we are left with, using the hinge theorem, that the possible angle of A will be 35 degrees. So this is how we are understanding the theorem or the hinge theorem by just looking at the figures that is provided to us. So now we're ready to answer word problems similar to this one. This one. So Nat's, Nat's Berry Farm has a swing ride called Screamin' Swing, and it stands over 60 feet tall. And riders are air launched in this particular ride and not Berry Farm. Now, according to the diagram, which you are seeing right now, and this is also the diagram associated with the screaming swing, which riders are farther from the base of the ride right here? Would it be riders from line segment 80 or in this side of the swing or side db. So knowing hinge theorem and knowing that we are given the measurement of angle ADC and angle BDC, we'll be able to answer this easily and choose with confidence which side is farther from the base. So is it AC? or is it CB? And since we know that 62 degrees is bigger than 54 degrees, we can now conclude that side AD will be farther away from the base using the hinge the theorem. So this is how we can confidently choose between two statements, which one is true or which one is false, based on the theorems that we are learning, and in this case, the hinge theorem. And now we're ready to answer this particular problem. And you will notice that we are seeing a quadrilateral that forms two triangles because of this included side US that is common between triangle RUS and triangle SUT. Now, what we need to do here is to solve for the values of x, and we know that whenever we are solving for the value of x, we are using algebra to be able to solve for that x. And the challenge here is to write the correct equation that will help us solve for the values of x. And how are we going to do that? We're going to use geometry first. So, since we're using geometry and we're using diagrams, let's draw the diagram first because that's one strategy that will help you understand the problem that you are working on. So this is our figure. And this is not up to scale. This is just for the purpose of understanding how we're going to strategize on how to solve this problem. So this is R, this is U, this is T, and this is S. We know that RU is congruent to UT. RU is congruent to UT because it's given. And we also know that this side right here is 
common to the two triangles, so we can establish the reflexive property US is congruent to US to know that they share the same side. And when they share the same side, we know that they are sharing a congruent side between these two triangles. And we also know that RS is equal to 15, RS is equal to 15, and ST is equal to 10. Now, for the angle measurement, we are seeing 60 degrees for RUS, and we are seeing an algebraic expression for the ang angle measurement of SUT. And by using the hinge theorem, we'll compare the measurement of RUS in comparison to SUT using the hinge theorem, what inequality can we use to be able to properly or correctly state or choose the statement for the two angles. And we'll be able to do that because we know that RS is 15 and ST is 10. So that means RUS is bigger than SUT using the hinge theorem. So we can now write our algebraic equation or inequality in this case because they're not equal. RUS, as we know, is 60 degrees which is greater than the measurement of SUT, which is 5x minus 20 degrees. So in this case, all we need to do is to solve the inequality, just like any algebra problem. So we add 20 degrees on both sides. And this becomes 80 degrees greater than 5x. And then we divide both sides by 5. And... The inequality is 80 divided by 5 is 16 degrees. So we know that in algebra, we always use the, um, the coefficient over the numerical value. And when we switch places, we also switch the inequality symbol. So from 16 degrees greater than x, we'll write x is less than 16 degrees. So this is the first part of our inequality. The second part of our inequality is to find the lower limit of our x. And before we head to that solution, let's recap on how we're able to find the first set of inequality by knowing that RU is congruent to UT and that US is common to the two triangles. That's why we wrote US is congruent to US. And we also know that RS is bigger than ST given that RS is 15 and ST is 10. Now we can use the hinge theorem and create our algebraic equation, or in this case, inequality, to solve for our range of possible values of x. Operative word is range, so it's not an equation, but an inequality. So we have 60 greater than 5x minus 20 using the hinge theorem because we know that angle RUS, this is RUS, is greater than SUT. And now we're able to solve for x, which is x less than 16. And we need to find the lower limit of x or the value that will complete our range of possible values of x to have a proper triangle that we are seeing in this figure. So our new equation will be, since we have an expression 5x minus 20, this will not cannot be a negative angle, so we are going to write 5x or angle TUS greater than 0, and that's what we're going to find next. So how are we going to find it? Using algebra, of course. So by equating or writing out measurement of TUS greater than 0, TUS is an expression 5x minus 20 greater than 0 plus 20 on both sides because now we're using algebra 5x greater than 20 and divide both sides by 5 so x is greater than 4 so now that we have the two values now we need to write this in inequality form which is also a challenge for most students so to be able to understand this better let's create a visual. And every time I use visuals, I use a number line. This is zero, 
16 and 4, so we need 4 and 16, so 4 and then 16. So having this straight line as our visual, we know that the value of x should be less than 16 degrees. So this is 16, and it's less than, so the arrow is to the left. And 4, or x, should be greater than 4, and this is 4. And it's to the right of the inequality. So now, the included values of x in our inequality is simply the values inside this interval, 4 and 16. So to write this out using the language of mathematics, we simply write x is in between 4 and 16. And this is the proper way on how to write the range of values given that x should be lower than 16 degrees and x should be bigger than 4 degrees so that we'll be able to produce this figure in geometry. So this is how we solve this problem using geometry and algebra. So knowing your algebra and knowing how to write your equation correctly will help you solve a more complex and challenging problem similar to this one. That is why your number bender challenge of the day is to be able to figure out the correct inequality for this particular angles that we have here in our number bender challenge of the day. So comment it down below and see how you're going to figure out the proper inequality for M1 and M2 using the hinge theorem and the given values on our two triangles right there. And that is our lesson on the Hinge Theorem. And again, there are a lot of uh, theorems, postulates, corollaries in geometry. And when we are working with problems wherein we need to write or formulate our own equation, algebra will help you to be able to understand how you write the information given in a figure in an algebraic expression or equation so that it will help you find or solve or the missing parts of a geometric figure that you are looking for. This is Dr. E, and see you again next time. Bye!